cents. Most money I ever made in Hollywood. Do come, Mr. Ackermees. Members, what you could not fit them all on stage. The first award is the Mr. Flake Award. And the nominees are Too Short for his film, The Incredible Shrinking Man. Also nominated, Ed for his film, The Man with X-Ray Eyes. And Nick for my life. And the winner is Danny Too Short for The Incredible Shrinking Man. The Incredible Shrinking Man. Hold it, we gotta find it here. Speech, yes. I was framed. Thank you very much. Oh, you got it for us. The award. For Mr. Flake. It's true he does eat Kellogg's cornflakes. And moving right along to the next one is the Fag Award. All right, and the nominees for this are Marco for his film <laughs> also nominated for his film My Life, Nick, and Newcomb nom nominated for his film It's a Chilliful, It's a Chilliful Life. <laughs> and the winner is Newcomb for It's a Chilliful Life. The award dispenser, please. On behalf of me, myself, and I, Fruit Loops. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Long ago, the earth filled of water with not much to show. I set sail my clipper with compass in hand, searching to find out where it began. We sailed to the north, sailed to the east, with no land in sight. We sat down to feast When out of the crow's nest Land hole did I hear And on the horizon An island appeared Oh, great dead rocks of the sea Disappeared. I land on my island and watched in great fear. All my crew getting slaughtered by men with big guns. Gone were the people who swam in the sun.
to the desert, not knowing it me. I climbed to my island and cried for the sea. Nothing but pillars, monuments of pain. I set sail the clipper, but my ghost still remains. Okay, the next award is the Boana Award. All right, and the Boana Award nominees are Nick for his film My Life, Spot for his film I Took Her Cherry, and Traveler for his film My Life with Medusa. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and the winner is for the film I Took Her Cherry Spot. John. Or, excuse me. Speech. Speech. I've always loved smacks, you know. You got to give away the next one. You got it. Yes, you do. And the unsealed envelope. And next we have the Cleavage Corn Toss Award. The nominees are Strings for his film, The Cosmo Chronicles. Yoda for his film, One Man and a Baby. And Nick for his film, My Life. And the winner is Strings for the Cosmo Chronicles. Four score 20 years ago today. Hey, Jolly Time Popcorn Microwave. I don't have a microwave oven, man. I want to replace this, dude. This next song is, uh, it's his song. Is everybody having a nice evening this evening? Good, I know I am, but I need some purple glasses and I'll be all better. Smoke. Don't make all that popcorn at once now. Strings was supposed to play with us on this one, but uh, he left his guitar at the loading dock. <laughs> so I don't know if we'll have it or not. Uh, we have some good security over there. Maybe they took care of it, but uh, I really doubt it. So is that guitar coming through there? Is it? Okay. Okay. Here we go. You're in tune, Graham. Play out of tune. Here we go. Simple things 
The edge is sharp and painful Crystal colored dream of grandeur Is just too hard to find It's come to an empty stare With little reason for motivation So I've closed the doors and I've cut all the coils Just give me another bottle to ease the pain I'm tired of trying to show you Something you obviously are never gonna see I feel it's wearing me down, yeah Chipping away at my soul for no good reason. It could have happened to me, and it could still be coming. The subject is really irrelevant, it would only be to prove a point. It could be as big as life. It could be completely unseen The time turns fire to smoke The ashes leave no form or reason I used to feel the whole world I used to be Spleege category, if none of you know what the spleege category is all about, well, Tell us about spleege. 
There's a place over on 7th, man. They'll tell you all about it, man, all right? The, uh, the nominees are Too Short for The Incredible Shrinking Man. Nick for my, for his film, My Life, for my film, His Life, yeah. Traveling Dave for his film, My Life with Brenda. And the winner is Traveling Dave for his life with Brenda. Yeah, all right, yeah. Come here, Trav. Come on, yeah. Mushroom Award. Okay, the nominees for the Ben Mushroom Award, Strings for his film The Cosmo Chronicles, Nick for his film My Life, and Smoke LeBeau for Seven Guitars and Seven Penises. And the winner is Smoke LeBeau. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. So I am a bent mushroom. I just want to say thanks everybody for coming out tonight. And, uh, yeah, you guys should give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves an award, man, yeah. Yeah, all right. We're gonna do a tune that uh, involves everyone in the band. And mostly it involves someone who is in our thoughts right now, who wasn't able to make it. Right. We're gonna have a special guest appearance by uh, Samantha Wayne here. I'll give her the purple glasses. Yeah, yeah, man. About somebody we got, sometime we got somebody cute on stage, yeah. yeah. Fuck you! They scream 
from another room. It's like I never left home. Bet and arbitration. What the hell does that word mean? You stupid jerk. Pinhole guitar fool rock and roll. Get a buzz on for the nuclear war. commercial break. Hold on one second. Okay. I have put together for $99.95 the LA Survival Kit. For the smog protection, we have this in the kit. For noise pollution, 90% DB, good for cloths. You can't drink the water in LA in our survival kit, a bottled water. And due to the destruction of the ozone for the burn you're gonna get, we have afterburn. <laughs> Not to forget the UV protected glasses. So now we know what it's like to wear on stage. The next award we give away is the Vaginal Fudge Pack Fudge Packing Award. Yes. But, and the nominees are Nick for his film My Life, Yoda for his film One Man and a Baby. And Newcomb for his film, It's a Chilly Full Life. And the winner is Yoda for his film, One Man and a Baby.
One more award to give away. This is the, really the highest honor in the band possible. This is, I mean, it is. It's, it's the highest honor in life, really. This is the Grand Poobah of Plex Award. The nominees are Nuke Come. Come here, Nuke, yeah. For It's a Chilly Full Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick Benedetto for My Life. And Ed Lyon for his film as he played the professor as everyone saw it in The Man with X-Ray Eyes. And the winner is Nick Benedetto in My Life. The Grand Puma Award. Yes. To, I'd like to thank all the little people. <laughs> I have a dream. <laughs> but that's all I have. Wake up, wake up! <laughs> One more tune. Yeah! One more! <laughs> One more sound. This is the first time we played this song tonight. Uh, tonight, yeah, it's the first time we played this song tonight.
guys, but there's another band. We gotta get the okay from the management to go on. I don't know, man. There's another band. We're already running late, man. Hey, you know what, though? We're... Oh, hey, we can do one.
right, that was up. job. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Texas. Uh, I have a lot of experience. I, I know quite a bit about catering. Uh, can you use some help? Send a resume and you'll call it if you're in. Yeah, right. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll send one. Let me check this address. Right, okay, that's the one I have. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, right. Good luck to you too. I don't know, man. These people, you know, they're all like, you know, come in uh, or send us a resume and a picture and we'll call you for this You've got to send him a picture. I've got to keep the job. I need some money. Everybody wants money from me. A bunch of auto mechanics jobs here. That's what I want. I'm going to try to be an auto mechanic. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to sell auto mechanics. I'm going to be a service writer. That's what I'm going to be. Yeah, a service writer. Now this is the roof. Oh, wow. We're going to throw parties up here? No. Come on, we come up on the roof and it's an automatic eviction. You mean we come up here, we're automatically evicted? That's right. Man, we haven't even moved in yet. See that day? What do you think? This is a few and a half, yeah. is it not? It's got Mount Baldy and San Gabriel, downtown LA, Hollywood, farmhouse. So we can't come up here and party up here? No, I don't automatically. <laughs> <laughs> church when I was growing up. My grandpa was a Baptist minister. Well, I came to L.A. and I met all kinds of really weird people that told me things would be this way, and, and they really weren't. You know, I never could figure it out, you know? So, anyway, I started meeting people, well, like this band, you know? I thought, well, that's kind of cool. They're, they, they're into cool music, and they like reggae and rock and jazz and all these, like, styles I never played. I always just played beatnik music and, like, Ravi Shankar 2266s. And anyway, so... 
Uh, I met John at, at college, and like we became friends for who knows what reason. And then I met Danny, and they like invited me to play in the band, and said, "Well, if you pay us six hundred dollars a week, you can play in the band." And and I said, "No, really, I don't have the kind of money." They said, "Okay, we'll take three fifty a week." So I paid them, and you know, they let me be in the band. They said, "Well, we want to know who all your friends are, you know." What's your name? Sabrina. Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is this the Roxy? Yeah, uh, Roxy. Um, we need to play a gig there, like uh, this this next coming month, and um, we're just wondering what the deal is. We just moved out here from uh, Texas. I just want to know what's going on. So, how much do you pay there? What do you mean we have to sell tickets to play there? We have to we have to sell 300 tickets at five dollars. You're kidding. I mean, we got paid. We've been getting paid to play. I mean, you know. Well, so we have to sell 300 tickets at eight dollars each, and that's a discount from the ten dollar price at the door. Wow, man. Well, <laughs> um, I I'll get back with you, okay? <laughs> All right. Thanks. Uh, bye. Wow, guys, man. You won't believe this, man. What's up? To play, like, over there in Hollywood, yeah. where, like, you're supposed to play, uh -huh. yeah. you're telling me that we have to sell 300 tickets at $8 and that's like a discount from the ten dollar price at the door that you would normally have to pay. Run that five and so five times or eight times three hundred. I don't know, man. How much money do you have? I mean, we can, I mean, it's a good gig, man. We can play. There's agents there. The guy was saying that the promoters come there and the agents from record companies. And so what if we don't sell them? We'll sell them. Sure, of course we will, man. Three hundred tickets. Sure. I know, I know. Yeah. Right. You have that friend in college, man. Yeah, we yeah, have some friends. Yeah, I'm going to take some tickets. Okay, I just look friends. in the phone book and write a list of people that we want and like go and visit their homes and yeah. sell them tickets. Yeah. Sure, be easy, man. I sold chocolates when I was in high school, you know, candy yeah. bars. Yeah. I sold tickets once for like a fun drive for something. I don't know. I went door to door. Do that. I could do that. do that. These people, man, they love to go out in this town. This is L.A., man. I mean, you know. I can't get over that. Though, fucking really party here. Like, so how many? How many? How many? I don't know. Anybody got a calculator? Does anybody have? Any I got one with a battery for it. We don't have any spoons. We have my Twinkies. Three hundred times eight. Jeez, man, if she gets like eight dollars a piece, a lot of money, man. Can you ride home? Two thousand four hundred. Who gets all that money? Do we get any of that It's back a Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday night. Welcome to Hollywood. You know, rock and roll is great, but uh, what it boils down to is the old day job, you know? Here I am in That's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, uh, making, uh, feeding a film crew. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's been kind of a wild week. We're playing every weekend. And I play drums. I was directing me. A very good band and I'm joining you again. And it means a lot to me to be in this band. I've got a lot of outside pressures that kind of inhibit me to give everything I got when I'm going to give a lot more. One is, uh, you know, I've got to keep a professional life for a job that I work from um, 8 to 5 and playing in a band. Uh, doesn't always pay. You end up paying to play. So uh, I've got to pay my bills. And also, I've got a lovely wife, uh, happily married. Uh, she means every, she's everything to me. And she lets me do what I like doing the best, which is playing drums. Uh, actually, in this band, I'm part of the percussion section. We have a big percussion area, and I play the drums. I play the red congas, cowbells, and all that. But that. I know basically the basics. I know what oil looks like and transmission fluid and things like that. But if 
you were to put me to work on one of these cars, I wouldn't know what to do. I mean, and I don't know if I'm fooling anybody or not, but I've been here two years, so I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> and let them do what they do best and I'll do what I do best, which is talk. <laughs> just basically, I just talk to the customers, talk to the parts department, talk to the mechanics, and just decipher whether or not what they're telling me makes sense so that when I'm talking to the customer, it makes sense to them. Um, and the last thing we do here is before a customer picks up a car, I test drive it. And if they put in a clutch, and when it came in, it didn't shift in the gear, and, when the clutch is in, I get in and start it up. If it goes into all the gears, they did the clutch right. And if it doesn't come back in a week or so, they did a good job. There's a lot of work before a gig. You gotta get all this equipment together, pack it all up, load it all up, down five floors, into your truck, and then across town. Such a life. But we love this kind of a beast. Keep us all healthy. Yeah. tonight and look like I'm really performing so it's, we, we played here for years and it's kind of been like our second home you know I can remember back in 1964 <laughs> that's right back in 1964 I wrote that song on this stage right here thinking about uh, a little grasshopper I once had for a living. Well, I'm a guitar freak. I freak on guitars, and I'm a guitar freak. And I buy and sell vintage guitars. This is some of the stuff that I have for sale, and some of the stuff that I personally have that's not for sale right now. And uh... Oh, wow, man. Like, uh, like, take this 1954 Strat, for instance. This isn't for sale. I play this. I play this in the studio. I play this at home. I don't play it live. You shouldn't smoke around vintage guitars. It deteriorates the finish. It's very bad for them. Never do that. This is for sale. 
except nobody wants it. 1957 Strat, you know. Well, that one's never been out of the box. And it's never been out of the case, and it's never been played or looked at or breathed on. So you have to leave it in the box, because if you took it out of the box, then it will have been out of the box, and you couldn't anymore say that it hadn't been out of the box. So you have to leave it in the box. Actually, let's take it out of the box. Let's look and see. Smash it. Okay, here it is. Oh, actually, it's been out of the box maybe once. <laughs> There's the box. Amazing, clean, silver case. Goodness. And there we have a... Oh, an unplayed 1966 Rickenbacker 12 string. Oh, that's quite enough. This is Senor White. Very nice flames on the back of the refinished neck. And I play this live, and I treat it really nicely all the time, because I care about it. And if it gets any marks on it, I get very upset, as you can see. And um, it's my favorite little honey pie. But I was drawn as a drummer. How, how long have you been playing with this track? Before Graham, I was, it was only three of us. I have a picture of really rich Danny, John, and me. I do this because I thoroughly enjoy it. And uh, it gives me good satisfaction. And uh, lately I've been working on a job for 10 years now, and I really got stagnant with it and bored. And, and I joined Misterectomy, and it's the coolest thing to do, and uh, I just love it. And that's something that I want to do. I want to, I want to make money playing music and, uh, and uh, working with the band. Bongo stuff, rubbing your balls. <laughs> I'm Smoke LeBull. I live in Los Angeles. I play guitar. Yeah. I think that John and I have something really good going, but we never show up to any of our practices. We're never together. Plus, we can't eat right. So we need people to constantly hang around and feed us. But uh, I would have to say that the bottom end of the band is definitely happening. We're like all uh, bass and drums, Jody and, uh, and Dave. They're tits. But uh, for the most part, the person that really holds this band together right now is uh, Graham Lovell. Doing an amazing job. We tell him what to do. And he, uh, thank you. Oh, we got all kinds of people coming out tonight. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. We don't have all the money yet, though, man. We got
got to, what I guess we were supposed to do 300 a day. We had, uh, that's like 2,000 bucks or something. Well, yeah. oh, wait a minute. I got $26. I got a check here, though, man. Um, no, no, no checks. I brought a check with me. This is rock and roll. We don't take checks at rock and roll. Well, look, we're going to have all the money for you at the end of the show. Yeah, we have the cash for you. The deal is, the deal was, the deal is you have the money before the show goes on. Okay? That's how it works around here. All right? This is Los Angeles. It didn't bump up wherever you guys came from. Okay? All right? But we'll have the money. No, no, no. We got the money now or you don't We're going to have this place packed tonight. Either get the money now or you don't We got people from Chatsby coming out tonight, man. That's not my problem. I mean, no. come on, dude, we, we fucking, oh, dude, dude it's came like all the way from Texas, man. It's like, how short are you? Uh, how short are you? About, well, you got like I say, man, 20, how short are you? We got 26 bucks. 26 yeah. bucks? <laughs> you guys got 26 bucks and you're supposed to have $2,800? But we're, we're going to... Get out of here. Get out of No, no, just I don't even want to deal with it anymore. I got more important stuff I got to deal with. I got to find a way to cover this situation now. This is the big time, you guys. Okay? This is how it really works in the music industry. Okay? You guys want to play, and you pay. All right? Man, you people are fucking full of shit, man. Well, then, deal with it. Deal with it. Hit the road, man. Hit the road. We'll see you at the top. Yeah, right. Okay? out here, you know, two months. We should have made it already, yeah. man. I know. I just can't believe it. I got to tell the folks back home that, uh, man, tell them this. I'm a stockbroker. Tell them it's all about rock and roll. Yeah, why don't you tell them that, man? So That's what I tell my people. It's not like you didn't want to become a lawyer or something like that. Right, exactly. Give it, doctor. Well, we got to make this demo, man, you know. We got to, like... Hey. We gotta get some money, man. Where are Here we gonna get another some money? crowd? We're gonna get some money right now. <laughs> Studio alive, it's Mr. Ectomy. All right, guys, let's yeah. have it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, up first with Mr. Ectomy, Strings. What's happening, Strings? How you doing? I'm doing fine. How Good. are you tonight? Good. Tell me a little bit about Mr. Ectomy. Where did the name originate? Uh, we're, we're interested in that. Well, Mr. Ectomy, we kind of, it kind of goes with our music. We, uh, we like to take things out and put things in where they're not supposed to be and we're just pretty crazy and to the left and to the right and up and down. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds neat. Every group has a story about how they got together. Why don't you tell us yours? Uh, how'd you guys hook up and, and what made Mr. Ectomy come together? 
Well, I would have to say that it was uh, Venice Beach. We uh, we all met uh, in our studios. Our bands were breaking up at the time, and we decided that the best thing to do would be to play acoustically for money, real money. We're mother mode. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We love you. Yeah, <laughs> even if it was a quarter, you know, you don't mind, Absolutely, you know? right. So we started on Venice Beach, and, uh, you know, we got to play in front of thousands and thousands of people, which I don't think a lot of people can claim, a lot of bands. You know? Right, sure, you know, sure. In one summer, we played, and uh, we've been on videotapes, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, uh, we got together... Nobody's ever told me 